Hi everybody, uh, I am Matthew Miller, the Fedora project leader, and this is part two of my State of Fedora 2016 presentation at DevConf, uh, special director's cut edition made for, made for the internet, direct to you. Uh, and so the first part of it, uh, I talked about some of the numbers, about the download statistics and where we were in 2015. Here is where I'm going to look ahead with mm, basically no numbers into the future because the future, you know, I don't want to say, put numbers on things because then they'll be wrong. Um, except for Fedora 24 and Fedora 25, I will put numbers, those two numbers out there. Uh, of course, in this year, the release train is going to keep going. Uh, Fedora has a schedule where we put out two releases a year, and our target is generally May and late October, which is a code word for November. And this year, uh, it looks like it's going to definitely be June and November. Uh, that's a lot because our release process targets those dates, but is a blend of feature-based releases and time-based releases because we basically integrate thousands of pieces of software from all sorts of upstreams doing all sorts of different things, and we try to get them aligned at those times and nicely QA'd and tested so that we can deliver them to you, the users, in a way that is not broken. And so if we would try and do that with a hard schedule, we would always deliver something that's broken. And if we would try to do that with something where we want to get all the features lined up without trying to impose a schedule on it, we would end up giving you a release once every eight or nine years. So instead, we have this hybrid approach. And although it kind of makes people frustrated because it's hard to predict the, the, last, the actual date and it always feels like we're you know, slipping, um, it's actually not failure. That's the process. And it's really worked really well for us. Uh, so uh, I can tell you that we are going to have two releases this year. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about the Fedora 24 features. Uh, they are, uh, again, I was talking about marketing in the first, the first part of this, about how um, you know, release-driven uh, features are kind of been our historical marketing. But one of the things is we're getting to the place where it's really pretty good. And so a lot of the changes we're making are under the hood. So in this new release, there will be new versions of software. You'll have Darktable 2.0. You'll have whatever the next version of Ruby is, and all of your libraries, and all those things are going to be updated. Um, so that's one of the things you can count on in a new release. And we also have some new additional features. One of the cool things is going to be in our infrastructure. Uh, if you're here at DevConf, you know that about half of the talks are about containers. It is a containerized world that we are moving into, and Fedora is preparing to be ready for that. And so one of the features we have is a layered image build service. And so this is not an end user facing feature yet, but this is a thing where right now as a Fedora contributor, you can take ownership of a package. You say, I want to maintain you know, some, uh, you know, some uh, library or a game or a utility and say, I'm going to provide that in the Fedora infrastructure. And that's you, know, you as an end user then can you know, do DNF install or go into GNOME software and search for it. And then it shows up as installable. Uh, we don't currently have that for containers. And so we are going to, starting this spring, you'll be able to be a uh, container packager and you'll be able to say, you know, I would like to contribute to you know, the web server container that Fedora will offer. And you can basically, using sort of the same infrastructure we use for packagers, produce these layered images that are basically Docker images at this point that you can, we can then actually use to compose parts of the OS. And so this is gonna be important for Fedora server um, if you're familiar with Fedora Server, uh, in addition to being a platform for building whatever your service is on, sort of the key feature of Fedora Server is roles, which are basically easy push button thing. I would like to turn this server into a database server. Boom, you push a button and then you have a database server and with very little, it basically does best practices configuration for you. Uh, and so those can be delivered as containers rather than being delivered piecemeal on your system. Another thing in, in Atomic, which is basically an optimized version of Fedora just for running containers, right now we're delivering the Atomic host, but we're not delivering anything that you could actually use it for. So having the layered image build service will let us start building the things you can do with Atomic, which will obviously uh, make it a lot more useful. Because right now you have the base and we expect you to build or find what you want to do with it. Uh, and so for, for Fedora 24, that's kind of an inward facing thing that is going to be available. If that's exciting to you, come join and become a contributor to that. Um, if you're waiting for it to happen and be something that you can use, Fedora 25 in the fall will have some of those things. So that's exciting. Um, switching to Fedora Workstation, if you are using it on your laptop or desktop, 
uh, one of the big things that's going to happen um, is that you'll be able to upgrade to this release using the software updater, so GNOME software, which you can use right now to update you know, to security fixes to the release. You'll be able to say, I want to go from Fedora 23 to Fedora 24, just like you know, if you have a phone and you're running Android and it says there's a new release available, it will do the same thing. You click upgrade and you'll be right to the next release. And I think this is going to be really nice for people who keep saying, it's really a pain that Fedora has such a short life cycle after reinstall. It's, uh, why don't you do a rolling release instead? Or why don't you have a five year life cycle? Um, instead, we're gonna just make it push button to go to the next release. And so it will be a lot less uh, of a hassle to do that. And that's kind of exciting for that. Um, another thing that's somewhat related to that, if you are not upgrading, if you're a new installer, a new user, um, and say you, know, you are stuck on some operating system that is not Linux, it's actually kind of hard to figure out how to take our download and make it into something you can install from. We've got some complicated technical instructions for doing that. Uh, what we're doing now is actually switching the main download. So instead of down downloading just an ISO image and you have to figure out how to burn that to a USB stick, you will download a, a program for Windows or Mac or Linux that will actually write to the USB stick, which we hope will make it a lot easier for people who are switching from proprietary operating systems to come to Fedora, to come to Linux. So that's going to be uh, kind of a, a nice feature as well. Uh, there are some other under the hood things. Uh, if you are a graphics technology geek, you might be excited for Wayland. Wayland replaces the traditional X11 uh, graphics environment in Linux. Um, it, the ideal here is that if you are not one of those graphics geeks, you will not notice or care that this has happened. You will just get a uh, more secure desktop. Um, if you ever played videos in Linux and you notice that the fr there's flicker and it doesn't sync, Wayland will fix that. Um, games will be better. It's a better world and it allows us to do better sandboxing to have secure applications that run in containers. Again, containers, containers, containers. Um, but uh, if that if that's delivered properly, you won't tell that you won't. It'll just be better. It won't be like oh my goodness, we're we're doing bleeding edge technology that doesn't work. So we're going to switch that. That's available now in Fedora as non default, and we're going to make a decision about whether it's ready to be the default for Fedora 24. Um, and if it's not ready, we'll wait until it feels like a painless switch for most of our users because we've had some great releases and getting that user base going up, and we don't want to break it and have another Fedora uh, dark ages. So there's that, and again, like I said, new versions of all the stuff. Uh, Fedora 25 in the fall, um, I, we'll, we'll see what's coming up there. We don't want to look too far into the hazy crystal ball, but like I said, layered images as actually part of the operating system will be part of that. Another one, um, the Atomic Project wants to deliver uh, Cockpit as part of a container. Cockpit is a really cool GUI for managing system, managing servers. And it's sort of like the new, the web version of logging into the console with a lot of like monitoring and the ability to actually manage Docker containers from the console, access to logs. And it's a multi-host thing for, you know, something, if you want to go up you know, to thousands of hosts, or maybe even hundreds, you want to get something like Spacewalk, one of the uh, you know, Red Hat satellite, those, those kind of products. But in a smaller environment, basically the idea is this replaces logging into the console, although I should put that as a caveat, it doesn't take it away. In fact, there actually is in your web GUI a nice HTML5 command line prompt right there, which is pretty slick. Um, I demoed this at Lisa, the system administrators conference, and it was bringing all the systems to our booth. It was, it was nice. Um, so that's um, the release train. Um, this slide's the market here in Brno, because I don't know what to show in a slide for marketing. I didn't want to just put a bunch of words up there. So uh, one of the things we want to do this year is uh, increase our marketing and really have a marketing marketing make an effect on Fedora. We've got that upward trend in the graphs, and we need to keep that going. And we'd like it, you know, to be like in these hockey stick curves where we uh, exploded the entire world because we've taken over with Fedora. Um, in order to do that, we really need to work on making our marketing work and make it more than just we put out a press release when there's a new release telling everybody that they've got a new version of Ruby because that may be exciting to a few people, but it is not a compelling story. Uh, so we need to figure out how to do this in a more effective way. And particularly, uh, marketing is more than just sending out um, announcements, it's more than making swag and collateral. It is kind of about going out to users and finding their problems, bringing them back, solving their problems, and then coming back and saying, look, we solved your problem. 
And so that's one of the things we need to do, including reaching out to people who are not Fedora users and say, what problems do you have that no one's solving? Let's solve them. Uh, particularly this year, uh, Fedora loves Python. This is kind of a new plan we're putting together here. Uh, Fedora Workstation has always had uh, one of the primary targets to be developers. We're going to make this a great workstation for, for that's why we call it workstation instead of you know, desktop or um, tablet top or whatever we could have done. We, well, that's an audience we really want to appeal to. It doesn't mean that uh, it is not an awesome thing if you're not a software developer, but the idea is we're going to make it great for software developers and then grow out from there. And this year we want to specifically target uh, and again, this is a work in progress, so help wanted with this, but we are thinking that we want to make Python developers in particular a, a target that we're going to reach out to because there's a lot of love for Python already in Fedora. I didn't have to make this graphic. We had a Fedora loves Python graphic. Uh, and so we want to kind of bite off some, developers is still a really big market, and we wanted to bite off something that we could actually, you know, chew. I don't know if we actually want to. Anyways, we're not going to invite people. It's a terrible metaphor. Um, and there are some specific things we can do in Python. Python is talking about uh, providing an ABI so that if you have binary Python uh, libraries, that they will work from system to system. Um, we can try and work and make sure that Fedora provides that. And we can find, basically, that's a thing that I know about, but I, we, what we need to do is go talk to a bunch of Python developers and say, what do you need? And so if you are a Python developer, come talk to us. Tell us what you need, what you would, like in your wildest dreams of an operating system for doing your Python development on, what would that look like? And we'll see what we can do to make that be things that are, you know, we're delivering to you in future Fedora. So that's part of the plan. Another thing is Fedora Hub. Nope, but this is, wait, nope, wrong slide. That's okay, I'll do this slide. This is the... Um, you don't need to read the details here. This is just to add something on the screen other than uh, me giving you bullet points of what we're doing. Uh, one of the initiatives we want to do as well is uh, university outreach. So this is kind of our high level plan for what kind of things we're going to do to talk to universities and get more young people involved because uh, even if developers are our target, uh, we need to get the future develop the future generation of developers so that when they go into companies and they say, you know what I want to use? I want to use Fedora because that's where all the cool stuff is. That's what I'm familiar with. That's what's useful to me. So we are going to ramp up in this next year our uh, outreach to university students. And uh, we're going to try and do that with meetups and smaller, smaller group activities rather than going to traditional Linux conferences and things where um, we kind of hit an already exposed uh, enthusiast audience who already kind of have an idea of what Fedora is about. We can tell some of those people, you're wrong, Fedora's better than you think. And that's got some potential for growth. But we're going to have even better growth by going outside of that to people we haven't talked to before. Uh, so that's part of that. Now this is the slide about Fedora Hubs. It is again something that is basically to be on the page because you don't want to um, be just reading what I'm saying. And Fedora Hubs, I talked earlier about Fedora activity being an iceberg in that if you look at, if you look at the wiki, you see maybe some edits going on. You look at the web page, you know, we update the download Fedora web page every six months when there's a new release. It doesn't really look like there's a lot going on because uh, on the internet today, uh, the web is for the vast majority of people, even highly technical people, that is the internet. And so when you look at Fedora, for us, the internet is email, which as we learned from Slashdot a decade ago is for old people. But um, email is, is our activity and IRC. We have all those IRC meetings, you know, three meetings a day in IRC where we do all this really hard work, but none of it is visible to anybody. And also, um, although those tools are great and I love email and I love mailing lists and I love IRC, and maybe some of you do too because you are also crazy, um, there are ways that we could have an interface that is better for those things. And so our design team has been putting together mock-ups for this thing called Fedora Hubs, which to my mind is sort of a social network for Fedora development, although um, there's kind of a trend that I hope has died for a social network of everything. So it's not quite like that. Maybe it's more like a portal, which is also a dead trend. Terrible. But basically getting us onto the web, that's really what it's all about. We're, um, and so um, the design team has been working on this over the last year. And uh, this year, the infrastructure team and Paul Frields, who's the manager for that team inside of Red Hat, has committed that they're going to put resources into this. And so this will be the year when we have Fedora Hubs. And I can stop trying to explain to you what I'm talking about, and I'll be able to show it to you. So that's the, that's the excitement there. Uh, so 
uh, Project Atomic. Again, containers, containers, containers. And I talked earlier about how we have this uh, Atomic version of the Fedora Cloud uh, Edition. Uh, what we're going to do this year is actually switch it so that Project Atomic is a top-level edition. So you have uh, Fedora Workstation, Fedora Server, and Fedora Atomic as the top-level things. That doesn't mean that cloud isn't important. It means that um, cloud, uh, as it is, is kind of a deployment environment and underlying technology for things, and it's not really a target audience. Um, when when we first invented that as one of our one of our top-level editions, we were definitely thinking about it as a target audience. And there is like people who are doing cloud computing and you know, infrastructure for applications in the cloud. Uh, but with what we were providing with the Fedora Cloud base image, we never really had a compelling story. And I used to work on Fedora Cloud as my primary job in Fedora. And so I, I'm, because uh, this is the director's cut version of this, I'm going to go into some detail on this. I would go out to talk to people, and like I was saying with marketing, what are your problems? What do you want from a cloud operating system? And they would routinely say to me, well, I want it to have a basic little tiny core that I don't have to think about, and then I want to have stacks that get lumped on top of that, and it'd be awesome if you could provide for me, you know, like different Python versions, different Ruby versions, uh, Java, all of these things as different stacks that I can plug in on top of that and put my applications on top of that. And so with Fedora Cloud, um, it never, the, the Cloud Base Edition as we had it, we kind of got the minimal thing going on, basically a minimal install of Fedora with Cloud in it and some utilities on top of it, but we never really got those pluggable software stacks happening in a way that made a compelling story. And so uh, along came this idea that uh, Colin Walters had actually at, at presented first at DevConf here two years ago, I think, amazing, uh, of using uh, OS tree, a basic technology, to make, to make that minimal core image in sort of a, a, a way that can be updated uh, basically in the same way you update a Git tree, you check out a new version of it rather than piecemeal, piecemeal updates. And that kind of is a really good way to make this core foundation. And that grew into this whole atomic host idea in Project Atomic, where we'd have this minimal, small, optimized OS for containers, and then use container technology to deliver those pluggable environments that people want. So Project Atomic is basically uh, an answer to the thing that people said that they want. And so we are doing that in Fedora, the bleeding edge, the leading edge. I try to say avoid saying bleeding edge, but we're kind of in the bleeding start part with Atomic, but it's gonna get, kind of get less bloody and more to just the leading part. Um, where we are in the forefront of doing this in Fedora. So right now in Fedora, we have a two week release version of this. So every two weeks, a new image is automatically generated and tested and available for download in Fedora. So that's already happening, but right now it's kind of a side side thing. So we're gonna put that front and center, I guess, as, as we go from bleeding into actually leading, and it becomes useful for people when you have these uh, things to run on top of it available. Um, it seems like a really good time to make this be our front and center focus. And that's not all, because um, that approach of having a base image and then layered environments that go on top of that, and atomic in specific and containers, like that's not just this cute thing for the cloud. This is really the future of the operating system, and you don't have to believe me. You don't have to take my word for it. Again, look at this conference that's half container stuff. Go to any Linux conference. You know, LinuxCon is now LinuxCon slash containercon. And all of these things, this is what's happening. That's, it's the way the innovation is happening in the OS. And Fedora has a responsibility and a job and a charter. Like We're supposed to be in the forefront of this. And this is the way we're going to do it. And if we don't, we are going to be left behind as an operating system. So we need to get on board with this. And at the same time, Atomic, the project, is becoming increasingly connected to OpenShift, which is um, a open, completely open source uh, uh, platform as a service that is also out of, out of Red Hat. And uh, that kind of provides developer infrastructure around, around the Atomic Container Framework. And that is gonna be increasingly tied together. And I think as Fedora, we also need to increase our relationship with OpenShift because uh, those lines are gonna be blurred and soon the platform as a service is gonna be part of the operating system. And um, that's a really cool, exciting future. So we need to be part of that. And Lego bricks as part of that. I've, you've seen Lego in my slides before if you've been following the uh, Fedora Next things. Uh, this is, again, 
uh, part of going to that, that operating system future, we need to work on actually modularizing what we have in Fedora so that instead of a bag of bricks, we could provide different solutions to people that are actually assembled at a higher level. Let some bricks, I don't have a slide for it, but bricks that are put together into pre-assembled sets that have been tested as a set, and we know this is a good spaceship. Um, I don't know if you did this as a kid. You take your spaceship and you build it, you throw it against the wall to see how well you built it. That's what we're going to be doing with parts of the operating system. So we will see uh, you know, that when, when, when we have an update to something, you know that um, some kid in Fedora has thrown that against the wall and it did not break. And actually, the kid will be a robot. It'll be, this is an awesome metaphor. I'm going to go with this one. Now, uh, we're going to uh, really work on our uh, continuous integration and continuous testing infrastructure so that we can deliver these parts in a way that is not scary. Because one of the scary things about this is, as a sysadmin, when we went to making these nice Lego bricks, that was a big improvement because the previous state of software, and open source software in particular, but a proprietary software had its own set of problems, was not that you had Lego bricks, you know, nice packages, but that somebody gave you raw molten plastic, sometimes still hot, and, uh, and said, here, here's, here's your software. And then that is really a nightmare for a sysadmin to deal with that. And so um, packages and uh, you know, the packaging guidelines we have and the Fedora distribution and other distributions came along and really solved these problems for sysadmins. And so that's a great thing. But it doesn't scale and it doesn't work in the world today, especially as developers. I'm a sysadmin, so I'm going to say it this way. As evil as they are, those developers run the world now and management listens to them, not the sysadmins. This is a battle we've lost. Um, and it's okay because it's good for the users because it's about the applications. It's all there for the users it's, and the applications are there for the users and the developers make the applications. So it's okay we're losing this battle, but we don't want to go back to that crazy molten plastic world. We need to go to a new world where these containers are produced and tested automatically and we actually have a better solution than having little bits of blocks. So we're going to be working on that this year in Fedora. Uh, and I think, I, I don't think that by the end of this year I will have a complete solution and be like, look, we containerized your OS, it's amazing. Um, because we're not going to break it as we do it. Um, we might shake it up a little bit, but we're going to make sure that we don't undo the, all the progress we have in Fedora growth by scaring people too much with uh, too much change. But this is going to be the year of show and tell, or more show, less tell. I've been talking about this for a while. This year we're going to have prototypes, we're going to have people getting involved, people showing up, you know, shovels and hammers. We're, we're going to make this, and uh, I think that's going to be an exciting, exciting future for Fedora. Thus ends the crystal ball. Now is the time for the thanks. I'm Matthew Miller, the Fedora project leader. Uh, thanks very much for the earlier part of this presentation to Steven Smugin and Ralph Bean, who did incredible work pulling together statistics for me, and especially as I was working with them and hacking at all hours to make these graphs and having like crazy ideas about, ooh, what if I did it this way? A lot of back and forth, and so they really also worked at all hours to support me, so thank you very much for that. Uh, thanks to the entire Fedora community because, like I said, you know, thousands of people made this happen. Um, I'm standing up here talking to a video camera, but um, I'm figurehead for a lot of this, and it's really the community that does it. Uh, thanks to Remy, who's here off camera, who gave a presentation of this at Fosdown, which is very well received, and I was able to use that to sneakily edit my comments to address comments as I talked, so that was pretty awesome. And uh, Remy is going to be doing, Remy is the community lead for Fedora and is going to be working on a lot of the awesomeness that we're going to need to support the future of this. Um, and finally, I had a lot of statistics. You too can become a statistic. If you are not a Fedora user, fix that right now. Go to getfedora.org and join in. And if you are a Fedora user or if you are just so inspired that you want to uh, become a contributor right away, that's awesome. What can I do for fedora.org? We'll tell you how you can plug in. And there we go. Thank you very much.